In this video, I'll cover floor framing using posts and beams and combine that with traditional joist framing. In Chief Architect, floor framing occurs on the level below. In this example, the floor framing for floor 1 will be built on the foundation level or floor 0. I'll move to floor 0 and then change the save plan view to the floor framing view. Before beginning, let's look at the default settings for the posts and beams. For the posts, since I'll be placing them on the foundation level that has a 4 inch slab, I'll change the footings to be 4 inches below the floor. With my post, I've set them to be using a 5x5 five five post. For the beam defaults, you will see two options for placement, either in line or under the joists. I have it set to be in line. I'll be using an 11 and 7 8 still I beam initially. To place a floor beam, you'll find this tool underneath the floor and framing tools. The program provides a beam tool for both floors and ceilings. When you draw the beam, it will intelligently put the correct beam in. I'll come down at the midpoint, click and drag from one side to the other side to place the floor beam. Let me use the 3D Perspective Floor Overview tool and let's take a look at this in a 3D view. You can see that the beam is placed, it's sitting on top of the foundation walls and will be in line with the floor joist. I'm going to make a copy of this beam and set it to be below or underneath of the joist. We'll also change the material from an I-beam to a glue lamp. Let me tile my screens by pressing Shift F6 on the keyboard. One way to create the beam would be to draw it, also set the defaults for the second beam to be underneath of the floor joist. I'm going to actually make a copy of this beam, slide it down, and I'll show you how to manually move the beam. It's a little bit faster than going into the defaults and making all the changes required to have the beam go underneath of the floor joist. So I'm going to click on the beam. In the lower edit menu, I'm going to use the copy tool. And I'm going to go ahead and slide a copy of the beam down. For this beam, I'll double click to open it up. And to lower the beam underneath the depth and height category, Currently you can see that it's locked at the top height at minus three quarters of an inch, which is just slightly below the subfloor. And then the bottom height of the beam is set at 12 and 5 eighths below the floor. I'm going to copy this value, Control or Command C on my keyboard. Then to move the beam, I'll lock the depth and I'll just change the top height. I'll paste that value in and that will adjust the beam down below the floor joist. I find this maybe a little bit quicker than going into your beam defaults and putting it below the floor joist. Then on the width, I'll leave it at five and a half, and then I'll just change the type to be a glue lamb. Just below the structural type is a bearing beam indicator. When the beam is marked as a bearing beam, this can create two separate platforms for framing. Bearing beams will cause the joists, when framed, to either butt or lap over the beam when it's marked as a bearing beam. For this glue lamb beam, I'm going to uncheck that it's a bearing beam. That way the joists will continue over the top of it and not butt or lap when it crosses that beam. Then on the materials panel, I'll change the material from steel to a lumber material out of the plan defaults. I'll scroll down, find the material that I want to use for the framing. That way it will show up differently in the 3D view. And as we zoom out just a little bit, you can see where that beam is located and to pull it back slightly so that we have a beam pocket. I'm going to go ahead and click on the beam and over the move handle I want to concentrically resize this so it actually adjusts it on both sides. I'm going to hold the letter C down. I'm going to pull that in so we have a beam pocket. And as we kind of come around here you can see that we have the beam pocket on both sides because I use the concentric resize. With the beam in the plan view I'm going to make a copy of it. I'll reflect it around the center of the structure. You now see two beams and to take a look at this with a cross-section camera, let's come in. I'm going to use the back clip cross-section, take a cut through the design. And then as I zoom in, you can see that the I-beam is placed within the floor platform or in line with the existing joist cavity. And then the two beams that we moved down below, the glue lamb beams, will be supportive underneath of the joists. Now the next thing I want to do, I want to place the posts that will support the glue lamb beams. In the plan view, I'm going to come in 
and use the post tool. You'll find this tool underneath the general framing tools and I'm going to come in and I'm going to use the tool that is post with footing. I'll come over here and I'll place the first post with a footing right in this area. You see it show up in 3D. I'm going to use the dimension tool and I'm going to position that. I'm going to specifically use the centerline dimension tool. Come in here and create the dimension for the center line. I'll draw a marquee by holding my shift key down around both the footing and the post. Move over the dimension. I'm going to set it to be exactly 10 foot. Let me pull up the cross section view and I want to make sure that this beam is set accordingly with both the post and the footing. So you can see how the post extends through the slab floor. I'm going to click on the post. I'm going to pull it up so that it's exactly sitting on top of the foundation floor. And now I can use the multiple copy and replicate this series of posts. In the floor plan view, I'll hold my shift key down and left click on both the post and the footing. I'll use the multiple copy tool, come in to the interval for the multiple copy and specifically underneath the joists, posts and beams I've set it to be 10 foot or 120 inches. Move my cursor over the post and footing, slide down and copy those and then hit my spacebar to get out of selection mode. Now I'll left click and drag a marquee around the posts, hold the control key on a PC or the command key on a Mac and left click on the beam and the dimension to deselect them. Use the copy and then reflect about, paste those over to the top and then in our 3D view you can see that we now have posts supporting the glue lamp beams. To fill in the remaining part of the framing with the floor joists we'll come underneath of the build framing tools and I'm going to come up and for the foundation you can either turn on the automatic build floor and ceiling framing or you can also do a one-time build the subfloor for floor one. It will use the information that you have in floor one for your floor structure which consists of a subfloor and then a 2 by 12 and when we click OK the framing of those joists will then fill in bearing over the top of the glue lamp beam and then cutting in with the steel I-beam in the center of the structure. Well, that wraps up this video on floor framing using posts and beams combined with traditional joist framing. To learn more, please see our other videos as well as our built-in help file. Thanks for watching.